All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about a couple of the different terminals that are offered in new plot, uh, and uh, specifically uh, the one that we're going to be interested in in the end is uh, the LaTeX terminal or LaTeX terminal uh, and its integration with new plot. In my opinion, this is the best way uh, to produce publication quality uh, graphics, certainly, uh, you know, if you're using LaTeX as your typesetting language. So, for those of you that will be writing theses uh, for your uh, master's or PhD, then this is uh, probably particularly interesting to you. So, uh, previously we just used Nuplot interactively to create graphics, you know, in the, in the X11 terminal. And so, in a way, we, we already have been using a terminal. Uh, the default one on, on Shamu is the X11 terminal. Um, but there are many other terminals that, are, you know, encompass all your standard graphics formats, you know, GIF, JPEGs, PNGs, um, also your, your graphics that you typically use in print, uh, you know, your vector graphics and PostScript or PDF. And then there's, you know, the X11 terminal. There's some other uh, interactive terminals. Uh, if you're using a Windows machine, you might be using the WXT terminal. Uh, on a Mac, you can use uh, the Aqua terminal. Uh, and then there's also one, kind of one of my favorites, is the dumb terminal, and I'll show you what that is in a second. Um, so if you want to see a full listing of, of the new plot terminals, you can just uh, open up the interactive uh, new plot shell and just type set terminal or set, set T or set term, of course, because you can abbreviate it. So let's just go ahead and show you. If we run new plot on Shamu, with version 4.6, then if we just cite, uh, type set terminal, sorry, set terminal, then you get a whole listing of the terminals that are available. Now, a lot of these are old printer terminals uh, when you would basically send uh, images right to the printer for, for rendering and, and uh, printing. Most of these are irrelevant today. Um, but uh, but they're still there. They haven't been taken out of the software. But uh, you can just take a look. There's I think 70 something terminals. Um, they're probably not all installed by default. Some of them uh, may need external libraries, like the WXT terminal for sure does, and that's why you don't see it here on Shamu. Um, there's also the kind of PDF lib terminal. Uh, there's another PDF terminal within uh, Nuplot that's uh, based on Cairo, but uh, the, the older version, the uh, PDF lib version, you have to build it. when you build against uh, when you build new plot, you have to build against it. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, like I said, one of my favorite terminals. Uh, if we just type set term dumb, uh, we get the dumb terminal. And what this is is actually uses ASCII art to produce a plot. And uh, you may not think this is useful, but it can be useful for kind of very quickly just. Uh, getting a, a view of graphics, especially if you're uh, working on a remote machine that may not have an X Windows system. So if we just simply just say uh, plot, plot sign X, uh, then there we get an ASCII art plot of, of sign. Okay, of course we never want to, you know, put any kind of plot like this in a, in a uh, actual publication. So uh, to just take a look at what you know, maybe one of the um, Terminals that are available for, uh, you know, your standard graphics formats. We could say uh, set term PNG, and when you uh, set it to one of these, you, you you also need to set an output. So if we say set output, and just give it a name, uh, say test dot PNG, uh, then we type replot. Uh, that'll replot the sine x command, but this time sending it to a file called test.png. So, of course, we have to exit out of new plot. Uh, there should be a file. There it is, test.png, and we can take a look at it if you want uh, with image magic. So, this is a file. It doesn't look all that different than if it were a X11 window there, but that's a, a file that we could then, uh, you know, post into a PowerPoint or, or whatever we'd like to do with it. So, uh,
what you can do, um, you can actually set up a, a script, a, a new plot script uh, that I called export.gp here, uh, such that you can work with the terminal interactively, say in the X11 window, to get it you know, exactly like you want it. And then once you have it like you want it, you can then call this script from the interactive uh, new plot command line and uh, it'll, it'll actually create, uh, you know, whatever. In this case, I have a, it set to PNG, but you could set it to something else, your favorite output format. And you could just call, then call this script and it would create the file for you, but then return you to an interactive terminal. So just to walk you through what this script is doing, uh, the first line here um, takes the argument zero, which in this case, uh, I'm sorry, which, which in this case is, is my plot and saves a file, my, myplot.gp, saves all the commands. That would be the commands you use to recreate the plot. Then the next thing it does is push your terminal settings uh, basically to memory. So it takes the current settings, pushes them to memory, resets your terminal to a PNG, and allows you some additional arguments. So uh, I don't have it here, but you could have you know, another argument here. We'll talk about what some of those arguments are in a second. Um, but otherwise then sets the output to the first argument, so in this case myplot.png, replots the previous plot command, and then finally resets the terminal to the default and pops your terminal settings that you pushed here, pops them back uh, in so that you, you, you basically return with the same setup that, that you had. So. You can take this script and um, basically save it as a file. And what I like to do is uh, I create a, a folder, uh, a hidden folder, uh, called new plot. And so if you if we look at what's in that, you can see I have this export.gp in there. And then what we can do is we create an environment variable. So I have an environment variable uh, defined. It, it's specific to new plot. It's called new plot underscore live. So if I echo the environment and grep for, say, new plot, well, that's not, that didn't work. Um, let's just go into my bash profile quickly and you can take a look at it. So there you see I have uh, on line 22 there, I have export new plot underscore live and then I have a, uh, the path to that directory, the, the, the hidden directory. So this is a special variable that newplot looks for and uh, uses to search uh, for commands. So, uh, sorry. So anyway, uh, just to give you an example of that, uh, if we run newplot and then say we say we uh, you know, plot sign x. And that brings up our, our plot, but say we want to do some interactive stuff to it. So, um, you know, we, we could say uh, set x label time, set y label force, and replot. So now we have some labels on our graph. So now if we wanted to call that script, and export the current plot to a PNG file, then we would say call export GP, uh, and then we give it some name, say uh, force plot. Okay, and on Shamu here we get some warning about missing fonts or something, but it doesn't really matter. So now you see, uh, if, you, if we exit out of there, we go back and, and list the directory, you see that there's two files there, forceplot.gp, that's the set of commands used to recreate that, file, uh, that plot in, in new plot, and then also the, the PNG. So if you want to take a look at that, we can. So there's the PNG file that, that, I, that I just created. Okay. So some uh, options that you might give to the terminal, uh, almost all terminals have a size option. So as an additional argument, you'd say you know, set, P, set terminal PNG size 
and then for a bitmap terminal like a PNG, you'd, you'd issue that size in pixels, so like 600 by 800 or whatever. Uh, for PostScript and PDF, uh, you can actually issue the size in dimensions, inches, or centimeters. Um, most most terminals allow you to declare some font, uh, you know, so you could say Arial or Times or whatever. Of course, those fonts have to be installed on your computer, and there's some additional um, there's some additional uh, environment variables that you may need to define to point Nuplot to the location of those font files. Um, I find this, you know, because I typically use the LaTeX terminal, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, that I don't use this that often. I, I typically, you know, get my file set up interactively uh, the way I want it, and then and then just use the LaTeX terminal to get the, the LaTeX fonts, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's also this enhanced mode, which is almost, you should almost always use it if you're using a PNG or, or PDF or one of the bit, you know, another uh, terminal, because that allows you uh, enhanced font features like subscripts and superscripts and Greek letters and stuff. And then there's a bunch of other miscellaneous um, appearance options, so rounded or butt would uh, force joining lines to either have rounded edges or, or square edges. Um, and then there's also like solid and dashed, which would force plot lines to either always be solid or, or always be dashed. So um, here I'm going to give you an example. Uh, this is a script uh, using the PostScript terminal with uh, the enhanced option. So you see the, the line here, set PostScript enhanced. Set terminal postscript enhanced. This allows for, like I said, superscripts and subscripts and other things. So we're going to set the, the output to an encapsulated postscript file. And on this file, we're going to have some labels on the, on the file. So we're going to say set label one. And then we have some special syntax that calls out. So this you know, symbol F is actually going to make a, a phi sign. And then the symbol capital F will make a capital you know. Uh, fee sign. Um, then you just kind of your standard exponential stuff and more more kind of uh, cryptic symbolic stu uh, stuff there. Uh, but basically I'm setting two labels on the plot, then I set the key, then I'm going to set the tick marks also symbolically. In this case I'm going to have uh, basically pi o minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then finally we're going to run this plot command, okay? So if you run, if you were to copy this script into a file and run it, uh, this is the plot you're going to produce, okay? So now you see that the, here's the labels that we defined, uh, and the plot doesn't look too bad. There's also the plot labels down here at the bottom. But you'll notice uh, one thing is that the, the fonts are embedded in the graphic. And so when the fonts are embedded in the graphic, uh, there's no way to, well, unless you change the, the font of your of your document itself, there's no way to get the same fonts in the graphic as what you what you have in the document. So if you notice, you know the way this fee looks is not the way that LaTeX typesets fee. But of course, these slides are LaTeX slides. So um, it would also take a tremendous amount of care if you were using Word uh, or something else uh, to be able to reproduce the fonts in the graphic and in the text. And you know, in real publication quality, high quality document, this, these are uh, kind of important things, especially where you have a lot of mathematics, because it allows you to label your plot with particular symbols or mathematics that you can then refer to in the text, and and uh, they're they're unambiguous. They'll they'll be the exact same font, so you'll know exactly you know one symbol is referring to something in a plot or, or otherwise. So this is where the LaTeX terminal comes in, and there's several. LaTeX terminals, there's PS LaTeX, PS Tech. Um, one of the more popular ones is EPS LaTeX. So uh, if we now run this script, it's basically the same, you know, the same plot command, except now we're going to use LaTeX, uh, LaTeX um, definitions to describe the text. So in LaTeX, you know, mathematics are always uh, enclosed in, in uh, dollar signs, and then, then you know, the um, if you're, if you're unfamiliar with LaTeX, this may look a little bit uh, strange to you, but it's a far less cryptic than, than the other one. 
uh, in that you know this phi will produce phi of x, uh, whereas before we had to use that you know backslash I'm sorry forward slash symbol f, and uh, so anyway, this is basically the same plot if we if we create this, and uh, if we run this, it's going to produce two files. Okay, so you notice that the output is a tech file, so it's going to produce two files. Uh, the first file uh, is going to be a, uh, it's going to have a .tech file extension. The second file is going to have a .eps file extension. Okay, so then what we do is we include the .tech file in our LaTeX uh, document. So we we do something like this: we'd include our input the .tech file, and then in from the .tech file, it's going to automatically load the eps file. So the EPS file contains all the graphics, the lines, uh, the tick marks, etc. And the .tech file defines all the font. And so when you do this and you run it, this is the same, you know, basically the same as before, but now you have a, a much more nicely typeset labels that include the correct symbols. So if you notice, this symbol matches this symbol here, this symbol here. Uh, same for the lowercase v. And uh, just in general, th these are typeset in a much more, uh, you know, a nicer way. And so this is really the way to, to get the highest quality output. Uh, of course, these are vector graphics, uh, the lines are, so you can zoom in on these as far, you know, they're defined by mathematics, not by pixels. So you can zoom in on these and you'll always achieve a high quality figures. So in summary, um, you know, if you're using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, you might want to use a bitmap like a PNG for best results. Uh, PNGs are nice because they can, uh, of all the bitmap images, they're the only ones that have transparent backgrounds, or you can, uh, well, that you can uh, set to have transparent ba backgrounds, so that you know if you have some kind of, um, if you want to overlay plots on top of one another, kind of have them overlap, then you can do that uh, easier with with a PNG. Um, it's also okay to use bitmap images in PowerPoint or something because th the resolution of your, your uh, projectors typically aren't that high, so you won't get a lot of benefit by using a vector graphic style um, for that uh, purpose. But uh, you know, for, for large posters and, and print quality, you really need to use a PostScript or a PDF or an EPS, or which includes a LaTeX, EPS LaTeX, PS LaTeX. There's also another one, if you're familiar with the LaTeX uh, TGITS package for creating graphics, you can actually export directly to that. And then that allows you a lot of flexibility to go in and modify it to do kind of, you know, you have the full full power of uh, TGITS there, T or TICS, however you say it. So anyway, this is just a, a lecture to give you an introduction to using uh, new plot terminals and in, in particular the, the LaTeX terminal.